Hi there folks, it's Mike here, and in this lesson in the C++ series, we're going to be talking about what makes C++ such a powerful language, and that is the idea of pointers. So pointers themselves are just a data type that allows you to store an address in memory. And we've talked about addresses previously with the ampersand operator that gives us the address of or tells us where some variable lives in memory. Now, pointers can sometimes be a scary topic to folks, but I want to assure you they're just something that gives us a lot of power in the language. And we're going to learn how to properly use them in this lesson and several other videos in this series. Now, I have given other talks about pointers. So I'm going to link that somewhere in the description below or above me so that you can follow along if you just want to get it out of the way all at once and get a full crash course into pointers. But that said, let's go ahead and take a brief look in this video about what pointers are with a working example and just try to get some intuition as to what they are. Again, they're not something to be afraid of or scared of, but something that makes C++ a powerful language to work in. So here we are with pointers. And again, if I just draw your attention to the right side of the screen here, a pointer is just something or a data type that stores an address. So let me go ahead and just show an example of what that is. Now on the left hand side of the screen here, you'll see that I have a main, one variable here, and the ability to print out the value that is x here. So let me go ahead and just compile this program, and you'll clearly see that, well, x stores the value 7 here. Now again, if we want to think about where does x live in memory, Again, we can sort of visualize this memory here. And I'm just going to draw out some of our working memory here. And let me just give some addresses here. Let's just say we have something like an address like this. And the addresses are just going to grow down in our program, etc., etc. And if we figure out where x lives in memory, it's going to live somewhere here as an integer takes up four bytes of memory in my program. And well, the value that we're actually storing here, again, in this value is, well, a giant seven or whatever the value is that happens to be in X here. So I'll just go ahead and make that clear here so that you can see it. All right, and there we go. All right, so, and because an integer again is four bytes of memory, so let me go ahead and just highlight here. I have four boxes filled in, again, representing X here. Now let's go ahead and just print off what the X address is here. So X is address. And we do, again, the ampersand X here to get the address of X here. And if I go ahead and recompile and rerun this program, you'll see exactly where in memory this X lives on my machine. Again, your address might be different because, well, you have a different machine than mine and different programs with different memory locations and so on. So let's go ahead and now introduce pointers here. And the idea is we have a new data type here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a pointer to an integer. So int star. This is the full type here. If I wrap it in parentheses, just so to be clear with this asterisk here after the data type, that's what makes a pointer a pointer. And I'm just going to name this something like p of x. And usually I prefix my pointer variables with a p just so it's a little bit clear and will be a little bit clear in these lessons for what they are, uh, at least while we're learning. And since pointers store an address of something, well, the address of x is something that we can store and x itself is an integer. So again, if I'm going to visually represent this, let's go ahead and draw in what p of x is here. Well, it is again just some variable here. So allow me to just take up some amount of these uh, boxes here, something like this. And this is storing, well, the address of wherever 7 lives. So I'm just going to draw an arrow up to the start of, well, whatever this address is here. So in our little example here, this would be 0x1000, something like that. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and see what exactly p of x stores here uh, by printing it out here. So let's see. p of x stores and I'm just going to print out p of x. Because again, just like what we did before where we said, well, what does x store and just the variable, let's see what p of x stores. And pointers, again, 
store addresses. And that's what we did with the assignment here. We're saying P of X store the address of X, or sometimes you'll sort of read this in English as P of X points to X here. So the assignment or equal sign is really just saying it's pointing to when the data type is a pointer. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure we save this. I'll give a recompile here and go ahead and pause if you want and see what your intuition tells you what should be stored in P of X here. And with that said, if you've paused and thought about that, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you'll see that, well, the address that P of X stores is exactly X's address because, well, that's the job of a pointer here to store an address. And that's it. That's all a pointer is supposed to do. Now, you might say next, Mike, well, what's the point of pointers here? And I'll sort of wrap around and get to uh, why we use pointers and why they're powerful. But at this point, they really don't seem very useful because what am I going to do with this value? And that's where the idea of dereferencing comes in. So I'm going to just draw another little box here and put a, another idea here about dereferencing. And this allows us to retrieve the value of the data we point to, or maybe the type that we point to, the type of data. Since we have a pointer here, P of X, that points to, well, what's the type? Integers, INTs here. So that's what we can retrieve when we dereference P of X. Now, how exactly do we do that here? Uh, well, let's just go ahead and look at an example. So P of X uh, dereferenced, dereferenced, and I'm just going to line up the uh, colons here just so it's a little bit more clear for those of you uh, following along. Well, we dereference by putting an asterisk in front of the pointer here. And you can think of that as sort of Again, the asterisk or the star being something that we point to and think of it as saying, hey, go ahead and follow along this arrow here and give me whatever the value is of the thing that we point to, whether we want to read that value back or write a new value and modify the actual value here. So let's go ahead and run this program and see what it looks like. And I'll just make it a little bit bigger on the screen so you can see everything uh, on one line there while I uh, save, recompile. And if I rerun this, you will see that, well, the if I dereference what lives at this address, which is x here, and we can clearly see that, I should get back the value 7. So that's the idea of dereferencing. Okay, so what really is the point here? Why would you say, well, Mike, why don't I just use x everywhere because that's got the value I want? Well, sometimes we want to share data or be able to have multiple things pointing to a data. So as an example, let's think if we had something or some piece of data that might be shared. Maybe X stores somebody's age and we want to, from multiple sources, be able to point to this same age here. So let me go ahead and just create another pointer here. I'm going to call it uh, P of X2, which will also point to the address of X here. And I'm just going to repeat this code here. P of X2 px2 dereferenced, and we're just going to repeat once again. And if I recompile this and rerun it, well, you'll see now that we have two variables pointing to the same piece of data. So if I update x at any point here, and let's do this after the assignment and say x equals 9 now, so I'm going to update the value of x, well, let's go ahead and see what happens. Well, my P of X and PX2 are still pointing to the same location of X wherever it gets updated. So the value should be for all of them nine here, at, or at least when I dereference the pointers. Remember, the value stored in the pointer is actually an address. And when we dereference it and sort of use this indirection, that's this arrow here, where we're indirectly referring to the value by checking at the address where we want to access the pointer and then dereferencing it with that star. That's how we're retrieving the value here. So again, 
the point of all of this or why we use pointers in languages like C, C++, D language, many other languages, is they allow us to share data. And what's going to be interesting, I think, is if you're watching this video for the first time and you come back to it again, you're going to start thinking about pointers later as you use them more, because we're going to use pointers for things like building linked data structures, like when we want to build tree-like data structures and we have to point to different nodes in different directions. Pointers allow us to do that. And likewise, we'll also be talking about memory management and we'll think about pointers as a means to control sort of the lifetime of how long objects live in our programs. And then of course, as shown in this example, we'll think about pointers in terms of how do we share data that we have located in just one position in our program, but want it to be accessible in different places. So with that said, we've covered an important topic here with pointers. You've seen your first pointer or how to write one and declare the data type by putting an asterisk next to the type name. And then we've seen how to retrieve a value if we want to get back the actual value that the pointer points to. And that was called dereferencing. So I hope you found this an interesting video. I hope you're enjoying the series. And in our future lessons, we're going to be talking more about pointers, how they're used, and all of the benefits of pointers with sharing data, thinking about object lifetimes, and other things like building data structures with pointers. So don't miss those lessons. Make sure to like and subscribe the video. And we'll see some more next time. Thanks for your time, folks.